Musa alayhi salam came into that area and Allah just spoke to Musa. Inni ana rabbuk. I'm your Lord. Fakhla'na alayk. Take your sandals off. Innaka bil wadi al-muqaddasi tuwa. That you are in the holy land of Tuwa, the pure land. Wa ana akhtartuka. And I chose you. Fastami' lima yuha. So listen carefully to what is going to be revealed to you. Inni ana Allah. La ilaha illa ana. Fa'budni. Aqim al-salat ala dhikri. Indeed, I am Allah. There is no God except me. So worship me and establish the Salah for my remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the pinnacle, the essence of the message and the essence of the sin that Fir'aun did was Tughyan, which is injustice. From the major sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought up and mentioned in the Quran, number one, was his claiming that he was the Lord Most High. His statement, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى And what he said to his Congress, مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ He said, I don't know of any Lord for you except myself. So the sins, the major things that Fir'aun was involved in, number one, is claiming that he was Lord. Number two, is that he enslaved and detained Bani Israel. So a whole nation of people, Fir'aun had enslaved them and made them, made them um, into his slaves. Thirdly was <clears throat> the killing of the children of Bani Israel. And so Fir'aun, what he did is he had a dream. Either he had a dream or someone had the dream and, and they mentioned this to Fir'aun. He had a dream that a fire had come from, you know, like, uh, uh, like Philistine, that area had come into Egypt and and the fire had killed away all the the Qibt, the, the people of, of Fir'aun, their, uh, their race. And so when they asked about an interpretation, they said that there is a, a child that's going to come from Bani Israel that's going to uh, ruin your kingdom and take away your empire. And so Fir'aun commanded that all the children who were born to uh, Bani Israel, that they be killed. Now this is really, you know, it's very cynical what Fir'aun, like, uh, of his sins of the highest level, which you'll see repeated again and again, is his istikbar, his arrogance. His arrogance is mentioned in so many, uh, so many verses. He wanted to, he, his first commandment was that all the children of Bani Israel would be killed. But then if you think about it, if they're killing all the boys who are born, and all the male, adult, all the, the adults, you know, the elderly of Bani Israel are dying, how many years before they've eradicated Bani Israel? If there's all the boys are being killed and all the elderly people are dying out, then actually it was his economists that went and spoke to him about this. They said, it's not financially smart to kill all their children. It's bad for business because your manpower will be lost. And therefore your empire will fall because you've enslaved Bani Israel. You're actually killing all of them. We need them as slaves. And so what Fir'aun did is like, yeah, that's a smart point. For economical reasons, Fir'aun changed the killing of Bani Israel's boys to um, not every year, but every other year. So this is the year that all the boys would be killed. This is the year that they're spared. Harun السلام, was born in the year that the children were spared. And the year when Musa السلام, was born, this is the year that they were going to kill the children. Now a lot of times when um, like say FBI, CSIS or something like that comes knocking on your door, what do they say to you? They say, we just want to talk. Now imagine if these agents were the henchmen of Fir'aun, they would be much more stronger. <laughs> physically like they're they're like criminals the henchmen of Fir'aun and they're not asking politely they are barging into the house searching if you have any children or if any neighbors heard the crying of a baby in your house and they will take that child and take their swords and they will chop the heads off your child this is what they're doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
about the test of Bani Israel and th in this it was a, a bala, a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, azim, an enormous test from Allah azza wa jal, that he tested Bani Israel with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, uh, to Umm Musa, if you're afraid for your son, take the child, put him in a basket and throw him in the river and let the water take him. Now, if you're a parent, you'll understand a little bit about what's happening here. A parent normally doesn't even let their eyesight off of their child. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you're afraid, then do this. What did Ummi Musa do? She did that. She put Musa in the, in the basket. Musa alayhi salam arrives at the doorstep, the river step, because they have a lake castle. <laughs> they have a river castle that goes on to the river. And so the, uh, Musa alayhi salam arrives at the home of Fir'aun, the baby killer himself. Who's the first person to see Musa alayhi salam? The wife of Fir'aun. The wife of Fir'aun. She picks up Musa, she kisses Musa, and she says, li walak. She said, he is the delight of my eyes and your eyes. And Fir'aun, you know, and, and you, this is a husband-wife lesson that you learn. He wants to please his wife. Asiya السلام, didn't have children. Wife of Fir'aun, she didn't have children. And, and this concerned her very much. She was very saddened by this. And now a child was brought to her door. So now the love that, you know, um, her love came out and she wanted to protect Musa. And you'll see that she says, li walak la taqtulu. She said, he's the delight of our, my eyes and your eyes. Don't kill him. Like subhanAllah, she's married to the killer. Immediately, second sentence, she's saying, don't kill him. Because they know this child is a Bani Israel child. That he is from the Bani Israel, he's not from the, the Qibt. He's not from them. And so, Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him so much that he wouldn't take the milk of any woman. Until uh, uh, Musa's uh, sister, she's following along, she's seeing what happened. And then she said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she said, Hal adullukum ala ahli lakum wa hum lahu nasihun. She said, shall I not tell you of a home that will do kafala for him? Kafala and you know, nursing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mother of Musa alayhi salam came and immediately Musa alayhi salam took mother, uh, milk from his mother. And he's very happy. Fir'aun seeing this, he's like, why is this so? Why, how come no other woman that he would take milk from, but he takes milk from this woman. And so she said in response to Fir'aun, she said that my milk is very sweet and my smell is very beautiful. All the children love me. And Fir'aun was happy with her response. And so he let her. So now look, she placed her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a theme that you will see when we ask the question, what saves a nation? When the fitna comes down upon them, what will save them? Placing your trust in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of times that statement, place your trust in Allah, people don't understand what that means. It means that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised something, even though in the here and now, you might not see that the promise is true. And so what a person needs to do is have Iman and Tawakkul, which is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and placing the trust that if Allah tells me He's going to do something for me, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill what He promised that He will do. And that is Tawakkul and it saves the person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ummi Musa, فَرَدَدْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ That we returned Musa to his mother and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say to her that, you know, she's going to be, you know, the nurse. He didn't explain the details. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just told him, put him in the river. So we returned Musa to his mother, so that it would be a delight for her eyes, and she would not grieve. Because notice, even if Musa is in the home of Fir'aun and she's in the village, she's going to be very sad what happened today. She wants to hear his news all the time. But if she's the nursing mother of Musa, she will always get to be beside him for the rest of his life in the home of Fir'aun. Imagine this is the nursing mother of, of Fir'aun's, uh, you know, the, the boy in Fir'aun's home. So what kind of special status does she get? She's living now in the castle. 
She's living in the castle and being treated with so much respect. And Musa alayhi salam, you will see when he went to Median, when he went to Median, for those who are familiar with the story, after he left Egypt, he went to Median and then wanted to return 10 years later back to Egypt. And they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mention why he wanted to return, but he took his wife from Median and he said that we're returning back to Egypt. His desire to go back to see his brother, to see his mother, to return back to his land where he grew up and so on. It doesn't mention the details of it, but this is he would be able even to see his nursing mother. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and so that she would know that the promise of Allah is the truth. But most people don't, don't understand and don't know this. Don't know this. Musa alayhi salam, as he was growing up and he saw the injustices that were happening to his people. Again, Musa is from Bani Israel and so he's not from the Qibt, even though he's growing up in the home of Fir'aun. And he sees the injustice again and again and again. A very interesting point and, and a very beautiful point was when Musa alayhi salam, he was once going out in, in, the, in the city and he saw one of the Bani Israel people in a fight with one of the, um, the Egyptians. So the person, Musa alayhi salam was known to, you know, support justice and, you know, stand up for this. And so they called Musa alayhi salam, that, that Bani Israel person, he called Musa alayhi salam, come and help me, help me. And so Musa alayhi salam is breaking up in the fight and got very angry. He hit the Egyptian person. He hit him so hard that he killed him. Now, that's giving you a little glimpse of Musa alayhi salam's strength. Musa alayhi salam's strength that he hits a person once and he doesn't knock them out. He kills them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately Musa alayhi salam felt regret for this and did tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repented to Allah Azza wa But nobody knew who had killed the person other than that it was a crime punishable by death that an Egyptian would be killed. Nobody's allowed to kill the Egyptians. And that is punishable by, by death. The next day, Musa alayhi salam had done tawbah to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah forgave him. The next day, Musa alayhi salam saw the same person from Bani Israel fighting with another person from the Egyptians. And Musa alayhi salam said to, in, uh, said to him, innaka la mubin. He said, you are like a, a very clear troublemaker. You're, you're a deceit, a de uh, deceptful person. And the beautiful lesson here, and then this person said to Musa, he said, do you want to kill me like you killed so-and-so last time, like yesterday? And so you can see even this person, he's, uh, he instigates fights. And yet he was from Bani Israel. And then the, the Egyptian who heard this, then the news went out that Musa was the one who killed yesterday. And then someone came to Musa salam, and told them, Inna al the mala again the word mala comes up it comes up again and again and again in the story of Fir'aun and wa ahu and his mala his aristocrats as we said the the grasshopper the people that are leading that small group of people the aristocrats they started plotting to kill to kill Musa alayhi salam fakhruj so they said leave what's interesting a lesson that you learn from this is even though as Muslims, nobody, you know, there's always, um, you know, this thing that you have all good and all bad. You know, all Muslims are good and all kafar are bad, right? This may be like a concept. But you see from Bani Israel, they were not all good. Such as this person who Musa alayhi salam said, you're the problem. Even though he was from his own people, he was the problem, this person from Bani Israel. And then you will see from Fir'aun's people, from the Egyptians, are they all bad? Are they all bad? They're kuffar, but are they, well, they were kuffar, but were they all bad? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them. From the highest level of them was Asya alayhi salam. And she was the wife of Fir'aun. And so it's not all in one sweeping generality that they're all at the same level. Asya alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Is it for the believing women? No, it's for the believing men and women, all the believers, till the end of time. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا Their example 
is Imra'at Fir'aun, the wife of Fir'aun. Because it doesn't matter who you're married to. You can be married to the most noblest person and you can be in hellfire. And you could be, and the most noblest person could be married to you and you could say, you know, vice versa, it goes both ways. We spoke about the wife of Lut and she was in hellfire. And now we're speaking about Fir'aun, who was one of the biggest tyrants who ever walked this earth. And his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made her an example for all believers till the Day of Judgment. When Fir'aun heard that she had believed in Musa, what does he do? Is he going to argue with his wife? He turns to torture. Again, we said there's misconceptions and then fear. Obviously materialism, he's like, oh, we'll give you this. But the, there's misconceptions and then there's fear. And so when Fir'aun heard that she had believed in Musa's Lord, he began punishing her and torturing her. Imagine he's torturing a woman. Not only is he torturing a woman, he's torturing his wife. He's torturing his wife to the point of death. To the point of death. It's not that he tortured her and let her go. He tortured her to the point where she's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nobody to help her. There's nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so who did she turn to? She turned to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And so people might think, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? There's nobody that can help. There's people that can help you, alhamdulillah. But imagine if there's nobody that can help you. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kafa billahi wakila. She's saying, Rabbi binili indaka baytan fil jannah. Oh my Lord, build a home for me near to you in jannah. Rabbi binili indaka baytan fil jannah. وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And save me and protect me from Fir'aun and his actions. And save me and protect me from the transgressive, unjust people, which were the henchmen and these mala and these people of Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took her back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam, he left, he left Egypt. He took that advice. And when you see Musa alayhi salam, he didn't go back to his home and pack his clothes and, and get a beast to ride and so on and so forth. When he got that news, Musa السلام, left. He left. So with no food, with no, um, with no preparation, with no riding animal, Musa السلام, just left like that. How long do you survive in such a situation? How long do you survive walking into the desert with no food, no clothing, not proper, um, you know, you have no provisions. And so Musa السلام, he went to a place near Medya and he's like collapsed. After all of this, the fear and, and the situation that he was in. And then he saw some people gathering at a water hole. He saw some people with their sheep and their livestock getting the water. And then he saw these two girls, these two women, and they were standing to the side. They were standing to the side and they weren't watering their, their sheep. And so even though Musa السلام, was in this situation and so tired and the he went to them and he asked them, why aren't you, you know, taking your sheep to, because he, this um, business of uh, tending to the sheep and taking them to the water and all is very difficult work. So you see, there's only men in that area. And he sees two women there and they're not even allowing their, um, their sheep to, to go forward. And then the women said that they can't, you know, push and shove with the men. They wait till the men finish and then they try to bet their best to um, get the water for the sheep. And so Musa السلام, said that I will get the water for you. Again, that his, his the, did Musa السلام, said, you know, make a deal with them, you're going to pay me this much or anything like that. He saw these women in, in distress, in need, and even though he was in need, he was still taking care of them. So Musa السلام, he went and he, um, what the men used to do is they, when they finished their watering, they cover up the hole with a huge rock. And the rock, this watering area is very difficult to move. Musa السلام, in his strength, he's pushing and shoving with the men, moving the rock, and he gets water for, um, for the sheep, gives it back to the women, and that's it, they're gone. And Musa السلام, went down and, and you know, sat down, uh, and then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
قال رب إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير. He said, My Lord, that indeed I am very much in need of your care to come down upon me. At that time, Musa alayhi salam made that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine all the situation. And then he lands his dream job. These girls, they came and they said, my father, you know, he wants to, you know, the father saw them. He said, how come you came back so early? And they said, this man, he helped us. He's a very strong man and so on. So he sent his daughters to go and bring them, bring this man. And so they brought Musa alayhi salam and they fed him. And then the daughter said, Ya abat istajir, inna khayra man istajar al qawiyul amin. She said, "Oh my father, hire him." The father of this of of one of the daughters from Median, he said to her, "How do you know he's amin? How do you know he's amin? How do you know that he's trustworthy?" May Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us and and let us learn many examples from this, inshallah taala. When she went back, they went back to call Musa alayhi salam to come to their home. What did Musa alayhi salam do to her? He told her to walk behind him. He told her to walk behind him. Now she's the one leading the way. But she would just like, you know, like throw a rock in this direction, throw a rock in that direction, and you go in this direction or go in that direction. Why did he do that? Alayhi salam. So that he wouldn't walk behind a woman and, and her body would be showing. Her clothing would show and so on and so forth the whole, the whole time. And he's not married to her. This is not his mahram. And he's a prophet of Allah. And so he said, I'll walk with you, but you walk behind me. So that to protect her modesty and to protect her and so on and so forth. From this, she concluded that this was a person of integrity. This was a person of Amr. And so she said to her father, hire him. And so her father hired him. And so he landed the dream job. It's like eight years or 10 years that he would work with him and that he would marry one of his daughters. And he got married to such a righteous woman. And this is the wife of Musa After about eight years, between eight or 10 years, Musa had that desire built up in him. Allah subhanahu wa placed in his heart the desire to return back to Egypt. And subhanAllah, as you see this built up, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prepared Musa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I manufactured you for myself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these tests, all of the preparations, everything that he had been through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manufacturing all of these gifts that Musa alayhi salam had been given so that he would be that servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah Azza had a mission for Musa alayhi salam. When they're traveling through the desert, it's, it's very dark. Obviously, there's no street lights, there's nothing like that. It's just the darkness. And then they went to. Um, and then at that place, Musa salam saw a fire. And so he told his wife, he told her, stay here. I'm going to that fire. Either I will get directions from that area or I will, you know, get one of the embers, like take one of the flames and come back and, you know, we can benefit from that. And then when Musa salam entered that area, Allah Azza spoke to Musa. He spoke to Musa. Musa salam came into that area and Allah just spoke to Musa. Inni ana rabbuk. I'm your Lord. Fakhla'na alayk. Take your sandals off. Innaka bil wadil muqaddasi tuwa. That you are in the holy land of tuwa. The pure land. Wa ana akhtartuka. And I chose you. So listen carefully to what is going to be revealed to you. Inni ana Allah, la ilaha illa ana, fa'budni, aqim salat al dhikri. Indeed, I am Allah, there is no God except me. So worship me and establish the salah for my remembrance.